right. Um, well, this is F-Zero. Uh, I'll be doing Grand Prix. Uh, Grand Prix is going through all three leagues. And I'll be doing them on the hardest difficulty in the game, Master Mode, uh, which has... Well, you'll see the difficulty once we show. And the vehicle I'll be using is called the Fire Stingray. It is the only good vehicle in this game. So that'll be the, you know, it's not like 99, like which has balance. So this is completely unfair, unbalanced. So one vehicle, that's it. So I'm here with my commentator, Ted Bear. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, my tag is Ted Bear. Uh, I've been playing this game for a while, and yeah, it's pretty cool, and we're going to show it off. All right, uh, let me get to the menu. So, I'll give a countdown in five, four, three, two, one, go. Woo. All right. So, if you've ever played F-099 before, this game is very similar. Uh, who could have guessed? But, as Z-Wing said earlier, the Fire Stingray, unlike in 99 where all the machines are pretty good, the Fire Stingray is basically the only one you could play, whether it's a full game run, full cup run, or just individual time trials. It has the highest top speed in the game at 478 kilometers per hour, and it has the best handling in the game as well. Its main drawback is that it has the lowest acceleration in the game, which is why you'll see at the beginning of every, uh, every track, he's going to overheat his machine and bump into the other cars so that they can start getting his speed his top speed all the way up. Yeah, it's like three seconds worth of time. Like, it takes a significant amount of time to go from uh, zero to 478. Uh, 478's the uh, unboosted top speed, whereas using an S-Jet like that pushes up to like 568. But it also, it oscillates from there to 478, and then it goes back up again. So you get one boost per lap, and that's it. Yes. So in this game, once you pass the first lap, uh, two things happen. The first thing is that other AI machines start to spawn on the track uh, that you will have to dodge. And the other is that you get what's called an S-Jet. Unlike other F-Zero games where your machine uh, power slash energy is also your boost meter, in this game, it's more akin to a mushroom from Mario Kart. You get a S-Jet at the beginning of every lap, and it's basically a one-time boost that you can activate wherever and it boosts your speed up to 568 kilometers per hour instead of just 478, and it'll do it for a few cycles. Yeah, there's only one spot on each uh, lap that's optimal, so there's no reason to, like, hold it. Um, I know in some Mario games, they might do, like, two mushroom strats, but in here, there's just one place. Uh, th this game is, this is, like, like I mentioned earlier, it's a launch title, so this is, like, the first in the series, so a lot of ideas they had in this game kind of phased out. Like the S-Jet, for instance, was only ever used in one other F-Zero game before they reused the uh, energy like risk management system. Yes. Even though there's not a lot of technical execution, there's a lot of fundamental execution. And actually right here, he's going to slow down. He's going to get second place. Yeah, I'm just bad. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. That's actually the optimal thing to do when you're doing a full cup run. Uh, when you finish a race, there's an animation that plays depending on your placement that you're in, and the first place animation is much longer than second or third place. So it's actually beneficial to just slow all the way down and cross the finish line as second or third place, preferably second. Yep. Any, any time loss from slowing down is going to be negated from the shorter animation. Yeah, it's like 10 times out to be like half a second to one second, give or take a little bit. It's, it's really rough to estimate, and that's actually why Master Mode was chose, was that the, the AI's rubber banding is absolutely it's insane. notoriously difficult. Like, uh, basically, no matter what you do, you could be on world record pace, but the AI vehicles are always going to be right behind you. So one little slip up, and they're going to pass you, which makes the game a lot harder to run, but it's also very beneficial, especially at the beginning when you had to crash into them to get your speed up. Yeah, that was a little close there. That uh, red kind of moved yeah. into my lane. Uh, the early tracks aren't really, I wouldn't say, like, worrisome. Uh, the AI is a lot less bad because these are more wide tracks. But as the game progresses, they start getting into more awful situations where it's very difficult to avoid. Right now, they're kind of okay, but I still have to watch out because they'll just dive bomb into me for no reason. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's silly. 
there's, a, there's three types of AI machines in this game. You have the other playable vehicles that are basically always going to be right behind you. There's the brown cars. Uh, they look like snails. We call them snails in the community. And then there's also the flashing cars, which if you crash into, they will explode on contact. So definitely don't want to hit them. Yep. Yeah, it, it, like right now, it's, you can see the frequency starts to go up as the, the uh, laps start to go by. Um, lap three is when it just becomes noticeable. Uh, uh, we'll explain a little bit about S-Jet. Um, whenever I'm using S-Jet, I'm able to, like, you can see my speed goes up, but I can also cut through this little rail on the inside because it's, it, it just costs you energy. But that boundary on the inside, that black boundary, that's an actual wall. So usually you want to cut rails as you use S-Jet because health is not tied to your, like, anything here. Yeah, so you'll still, remain, you'll still maintain your speed. You'll just lose your machine energy. Yeah, and, like, fi uh, Fire Stingray is also very durable. <laughs> and this is, I think, like, one of the longest courses in the game. It is. I want to say it's third or fourth. It's up there. So this is where like some of the strategies I do is like really hard to pull off optimally. So I have to kind of do some slightly slower. Like usually you can try and take the inside there, but it's super risky. So I just go on the outside. But other than that, like if you just look at my speed up there, like from the start of the lap, one bump, I'm still accelerating. Like this is a long, long, tedious process of getting up to 478 because when I'm not at 478 my vehicle's grip is like it's still strong it actually co has a stronger cornering radius but it's also like kind of loose so once I hit 478 I'm actually breaking the uh, grip a little bit so I can utilize that stronger strength of uh, cornering and I believe we call that a uh, we call it blast turning yeah blast turning I'm not sure if we dubbed that or if like Nintendo dubbed it in whenever they uh, released Maximum Velocity. But that's like the key mechanic to like go fast in this game with this vehicle. Because otherwise you're not really good at cornering with this vehicle. It's, it's, it's basically a tank. Yeah. And another thing to note is that uh, the more you blast turn, the more tiny minuscule amount of speed you lose, which normally isn't the biggest of deals, but because this game is... Uh, at this point, it's so old and it's very well optimized that you want to take turns with as little blast turns as possible because less blast turns equals more overall speed. Yes. Um, another technique you might have been seeing me doing is called a uh, break. Uh, I think it's called break, break tap tapping. Yeah, it's like one of the most recent techniques dis discovered in this game. I think it was back in like 2011. But all it is is taking advantage of the fact that like this vehicle has crazy good speed retention. And it actually like has a long oscillation period whenever you use S-Jet. So by breaking a little, at like I think it's like 528. Yeah, you basically, you press the brake very slightly and your machine is gonna stay in the 500s range for the speed for a few frames longer. Each successful brake tap uh, equates to about one to two frames saved. But because you could do multiple uh, brake taps during an S-Jet, those frames do add up especially on, you know, a fast lap or a five lap run. Okay. Yeah, this actually wasn't too bad of seeing Notion. Usually they give me a lot more trouble. Okay. And also the catching up's a little inconsistent. Uh, and then here's Deathwind 1, which is basically... The like, simplest course in the game. Oh, absolutely. It's like... I mean, I'm going to be going the speed cap during this track for the most part and this shows off like the momentum aspect of fire stingray which is built into a test jet so its speed takes a long time to drop from 999 like if you use any other vehicle on this track you'll notice just how busted this machine is like it's not even a not even close the uh, the boost plates on the ground immediately take you to 999 yep and there is one small little uh thing about these boosts is that while I'm above the speed, I can actually let go on the accelerator and I won't actually lose speed. So whether I hold the accelerator in or not, as long as I'm above 478, the speed loss is consistent. 
and you can also just mess around too. Because this is a very straightforward course. Yeah, um, it's just an oval. Yep. But also, with all that speed comes a lot more risk. So even though this is like one of the most basic tracks in the game, if a vehicle, oh, like speaking of this, you know, uh, like, like when a vehicle shows up. Thankfully, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, like when they basically show up in the most inopportune moments, um, I have to somehow try and. It's it's all reactionary trying yeah. to dodge them. They uh, the AI bumper cars they do spawn randomly, but it is a legitimate skill to dodge them. Yeah, it's, it's just very hard, especially yeah. on master mode. Yeah, it's basically threading a needle. Like here, I want to take the inside, but he took that away from me. Like if I try to get a little too greedy, try to shoot that gap, I hit him. I get passed up by the uh, other AI, and even though that's usually good for the end of the track, during the course, um, it's usually a lot more. It's worse to try and catch up to the vehicles in front of you, because it's usually where mistakes happen. Like here, I'm gonna have to go outside, you know, just to avoid that. And this is one of the few. Okay, that's cool. Ooh. So. But we'll still get it. Yeah, I couldn't do anything about that. Like, you can't really finish second place on this track consistently. Um, your only hope is to slam into the back of a brown vehicle. And here's silence. And here's silence. Silence has one of the most infamous turns in the whole game. It's a really, really tough chicane, and the optimal thing is to to ride the rail and try to cut. But Z-Wing is probably just gonna crash into the wall head on and let the bounce take him wherever. Yes, I am. That's uh, it's way too hard for me to perform consistently. So the best thing to do is build up speed and, and then wait. slam your head into the wall. Yep, because the optimal way to get through that carries like 20 more kilometers but it's, I'm not consistent at it. So at least doing that gets me to my 478 threshold by this boost up here, or a jump plate, I say. Um, another thing we may have forgot to like mention about jump plates is that they add 40 kilometers to your speed. So when you're below your max speed, it's usually almost always worth it to go out of your way to hit it. Um, another thing is when I'm landing from uh, jumps, I'm holding down in, it makes me connect to the track immediately, and it also preserves my speed, because otherwise I would bounce and lose like 80 kilometers or something crazy. So there's a lot of, just a lot of tech that allows this Stingray to just smoothly go through a course. Like it's, it's still taking corners really tight, but it's high, super high risk, super high reward. Okay, so there's a, like I said, there's three leagues in this game. Uh, this is actually the last of Night League. Once I yes. do this, there's like a, a cutscene that happens to just say that you did a, a good job. Um, after that, I'll start going to the Queen League next, and you'll start seeing a noticeable, like, upcharge in Uptick difficulty. In difficulty. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it's massive. And then from Queen to King is even further. Yeah. Also to note, uh, aside from Deathwind 1, you don't want to finish in second place on any of the last courses because there's no need to since it's the end. Yeah. So Silence, Whiteland 2, and Firefield. Yep. That's, Ooh. Ooh. That's okay. That's right, you still have your ass shut. Yeah, and at this point, I'm at Debo's point anyway, so that was like nothing. Yeah. There's a part on the track where you almost always want to use your ass shut, and it's right after the chicane on Silence. Mm -hmm. So that's Night League down. Yep, and it's gonna play. We're gonna watch the Stingray drive and pilot, and it's yeah. gonna recap all of our it takes races like, so far. Yeah, it takes like 35 to 40 seconds to get through this, roughly. We can get some donations read, I think, as we wait. Yeah, absolutely. I have $5 from Vibat, who says, the F-Zero community is always a great and supportive community that wants anybody to improve and climb. Z-Wing pushed me to achieve records I never thought I could do but before I tried, and I still can't thank him enough. Thank you, Fi Bat. Love Fi. Yeah, he took one of my uh, precious GX records a long time ago, and he, I never got it back. He's also tied me on the leaderboard for this game. Yep, thanks, Fi Bat. We have $50 from M the Marvelous, who says F0 stands for five zero dollar donations, right? I mean, you know, maybe it could. All right, well, next up is Queen League, so once I get past this screen, I'll just go straight to it. You know, no questions about it. Um, uh, what's going on? Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Oop. Oops. Uh, we might have to restart. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. No, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so at the end of Master League, a little cutscene plays. It's like, oh, you are the master of F-Zero. Good job. And fortunately, we didn't skip it. 
Yeah. It, it just happens whenever you uh, press the accept button around the same time that, like, the video shows up. So it's a little, just a little funny thing. You just lose six seconds. But, oh, well. Yep, oh, well. This is Mute City 2. Now, because this game was a launch title for Ooh. the Super Nintendo, um, they did not really know how to preserve space and uh, compress a lot of things, at least I believe. So there are quite a few tracks in this game that are just remixes or variations of previous courses. So this is Mute City 2. It's practically the same as Mute City 1. The only difference is it's a different color palette. As you can see, it's kind of in like sunset instead of you know midday, noon. And there's a giant traffic circle roundabout right here, and some of the jump plates have been moved. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, it's basically the, the same course. Yeah, I think it's like the best Butte City course. Uh, it actually has some variety. Uh, it's got one left turn. So, <laughs> well, it doesn't have just one? It has one that you don't take. Oh, yeah, I don't take it. Never mind, then. It's the same thing. Uh, Stay out of the left lane. Yep, the course uh, isn't as, like, it, it's basically identical to the... Uh, Mute City 1, but it does have these two jump plates, and you can kind of cut into the uh, railing. So I do have to do an adjusted boost strategy, since you can take advantage of jumping over dirt to, you know, also save distance. So usually you execute your S-boost around that uh, first curve. And also at this point, like, you're, you'll start seeing the AI, like, it's a lot more, like, not as much, but it's definitely a increase in terms of like viciousness you'll you'll definitely notice it as uh as the league goes on yep and queen league also introduces a lot of well we'll say more more tricks get added to this uh showcase like night league was your introductory like you know nothing too special not too much air tech just a flat flat race and easy lines, but that kind of changes, like, starting now. Yep. And Good now old. we got Port Town 1. This, this is, is actually very interesting. This is the uh, shortest course in the game, I believe. It is the shortest course in the game. It's shorter than the oval, surprisingly enough. Yep, and passing this vehicle here is, like, really difficult. Uh, especially when I hit the rail there. When you cut into the rail. Yeah. But and this is where the Stingray can falter because, as you probably are noticing in the top right, his speed is climbing up very slowly. And you might have to change the jump strategy. Uh, no, I should be fine. Yeah. I'm at 450. Well, yeah, I am going to have to. So I'm going to have to try this out. Uh, Land on the other side. Hey. So... In this game, the way they programmed it is they didn't want you making large cuts uh, with jump pads like that, as you just saw. So they'll have a UFO come down and grab you. Despite that, getting grabbed by the UFO, if you position yourself correctly and you use your S-Jet at the right time, it's still much faster than just taking the course normally. So, yeah. Yep, like and that, that was without the boost. And then you want to use your S-Jet basically as you land, because as soon as the UFO releases you, you are immediately at top speed. Wow, so close. That was cutting it very close. Yeah. So this is also, re it's a really small course. Oh, oh my. this guy. No, I got it. Okay. Yeah, it's a very small course, and that also means that it's very crowded with these uh, these brown vehicles. They're starting the to get The snails. Low. Yeah, they're, they're definitely uh, showing up in places I do not want to see them. We got the exploding one right there. Yep. So I'm probably going to get bumped here. Yep. At least and that's that, my aim. That's a that's a good thing. Yep. yep. About at least the rubber banding AI is that if you do slow down and you do manage to not get passed by them, you could use them to bump you back up to top speed. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, you take that shortcut every lap. Um, you just have to adjust it if you're below like 450, 460, and you just have it so that when your boost stops, you just leak a little bit so that you get right back up to your top speed. All right. So this is probably the first course in the run that like I'm actually worried about. <laughs> yeah. So Red Canyon 1, it's a pretty simple course, but there are there is a section that has uh, three jump plates, and you could do quite a bit with them. The optimal strategy is to land on one of the jump plates uh, and use your momentum in the air to land on the other one and then land on the third one. But on the third one, you want to hit the back half of the jump plate. 
because what that's going to do, as you can see, is it's going to give him the full jump, and he could cut that corner right there. And it's actually, it's pretty difficult to do. Yeah, I have uh, very little clearance on that. I have to land at least on the half, back half of that plate. Because um, if, you, if you land on the full, the front half, it's, uh, it's still not enough. Yeah, it's going to give you a shorter jump. Yeah, and uh, one of the things they changed in uh, 99 is they made these uh, types of shortcuts yeah. like trivial for most Oop. for most vehicles. Pinball. For most uh, vehicles, they were trivial. But for Stingray, it could still take it. Okay, let's see if I can get myself out of this. Nice, yeah. And that's that random AI is very brutal, yeah. as you saw. He did those jumps perfectly, and the other playable machines did not care. Yep, and there's enough jump plates on this track. Now, right now, I can't go for it. Um, because I only have a uh, consistent way to do it. Also, that purple vehicle should not be this far ahead. <laughs> like, that's not even like Captain a name. Falcon's a poser. Yeah, that's not a named vehicle, but you'll see that with the rubber banding as it is, like, purple vehicle is, like, really powerful in, uh, in master mode. It's a little too close to the sun. Yep. Also, as you, as you progress through the laps in this game, uh, instead of being able to finish in any place, like in any other racing game, uh, this game gives you uh, a safe rank or essentially you have to finish uh, below the safe rank or above the safe rank so that you don't rank out and restart. So once you reach lap five, you have to place either third place or better. And if you don't, you have to restart the entire course. Yep. So getting past like that is actually really bad. It could spiral. Okay, I missed you miss it. it. But you still have your S-Jet, so yep. that's fine. That's one of the good things about missing it is if you... As long as you don't explode on the outside, you could use your S-Jet. Oh, that was barely Ooh. second. Tightrope that. Yep. Okay. Here's white lane one. Uh, not really any shortcuts, but good corner taking. Yeah, there's a, there's a nice corner cut you could do with some jump plates toward the end. Um, in 99, there was a really big shortcut that existed for a little bit with the first parts of the jumps, the first set of jump plates right here. But that was never a thing in this game. You don't t you don't get enough uh, height, but you can get enough height there and cut out that little corner. Yeah, it's really difficult to pull off on lap one because I'm still accelerating. Uh, but from lap two and on, it'll be a lot more consistent. Uh, and also, the optimal way to like use your S jet on this track is just to it's like a combination of cutting into a corner like right here. This is like a really big sweeping corner, so you can just cut through the dirt cut through it and then you want to S-Jet into the rail and just ride yeah. the rail because yeah. remember you don't lose any speed you just lose energy yeah and ener energy is plenty with this vehicle it's just it's, a, it's like barely as durable as the wild goose so and also um I don't know your actual speed while on the rails but it's definitely better if you S-Jet it should be fine it should maintain like the cycle the the speed decreases much faster, but the, the, the time it takes for the Escher to run out remains the same. Yeah, like if you... So you can't brake tap into it. Yeah, if you were on like a, like a normal road, brake tapping's better, but it depends on the line you take. Sometimes just cutting into rails better. Also, that's a little tight. Nice. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I'll still finish for uh, second place on this. Uh, the AI can show up in, like right here. They could show up on that jump plate. So like, I can't even take it sometimes. But right now, they've been cooperating pretty well. Yeah, a, um, good, a good amount of this game is just reacting to what it gives you. Yeah, but also the uh, ice in this uh, track. It is not usually an issue, but the last corner, um, well, where that like, really tight, uh, I, think, I forget what you call it, like a hairpin or whatever. Yeah. Um, it is a very difficult corner to take without losing grip, because you can sometimes just spin out there. And right there, the, the, the bumper Thankfully, got out of the way just in time, but yeah. as you saw, it was running using the jump plates. Okay, this might be well, get two. It. Yes, it is. Yeah. And now we got White Land 2, which is a pretty difficult course, but it's got a one really cool thing about it. Um, there's a part in the track where it's separated by two jump plates. And what you're normally supposed to do is you take one jump plate and then land further on the track and continue on. It's right at the end. But if you're really good enough, you could land, you could take the first jump plate and then manipulate your height so that you land on the second one as well and give you a double bounce. Yeah, that doesn't sound hard at all. If you mess it up, nine times out of ten, you will probably explode and have to restart. Yep, absolutely. Um, one opening lap or at any lap. 
if you're below like 320 kilometers, you really cannot take that jump. Yeah. So I have to be extremely careful when I get to that uh, part of the track to just not lose speed. Like it's more important than uh, like going fast because if you know you just can't take that jump. It's pretty brutal that they put that in the game like that. And here's the uh, boost point, which is just go through the uh, yep. you know, and ice. Here comes the jump. Yeah, I'll try it. Yeah. Fear pressure. Yep. Yeah! Oh god, I actually did it. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm doing. <laughs> that is such a hard strat. I can't believe I did yeah. it first try. It's oh. optimal to do it all five times, but yeah, we're not doing that. Consistency over yeah. wild. I guess. Yeah, it's it's like not that much faster. It's like a third of a second faster, maybe. But it's such it's, it's so precise. You're just landing on you're just landing on the the plate. It doesn't matter if it's on the front half, back half. You're just landing on it. A, th a third of a second doesn't sound like a lot, but you got to remember with how optimized this game is, that is pretty massive. Yes. There are some records, you know, fast lap and five lap that are so optimized that there's really only like a frame or two that you can save before hitting like the limit. Yep. Oh, there's some. So I got to delay it there. I, you know, those vehicles just they do their thing. Like right here, this is awful. Okay, we're still good. Yeah, you're, you're fine. Yeah, th this is actually a really good course, like really fun, but they have vehicles that can just show up in the worst places. And remember, the that jump at... Okay, that was weird. That guy was just... Um, the jump at the end is basically... My first objective is I have to get past that. Like, I have to be going at least 320, which usually that's not a problem, but if something shows up on this corner here and I bonk into it and I spin out, you know, it's, it's just a lot. Hopefully there's nothing. You thought I was going to try it again, didn't you? <laughs> and that's and Queen League. There's Queen League. And that same ending yeah. animation is going to play, so we got some time for some donations. Yep. Oh, and do I ever have a donation for you? I have $1,000 from Ted Bear's dad. <gasps> what? He says, it is great to donate to such a worthy cause. I'm proud of my son, Ted Bear FZ, and his association with this great event. Z-Wing is awesome. Great run. Thanks, yep. Pops. Yep. Um, don't know what to say. Shout-outs to my dad. <laughs> yep, shout-outs to I, dad. I definitely know that Zin that did it. <laughs> uh, wow. Time for okay. one more. Time for another? Top that, Fibat. Yep. All right. <laughs> we have $25 from CyberBotX, who says, Man, this F-Zero run has been fun to watch. Well done, Z-Wing. Put this to getting Batman Arkham City upgraded to hard mode, and uh, we've had some good movement on that. We're about a third of the way there, so keep it rolling. Awesome. Yep. So King League is coming up next. So King League is an even bigger step up in difficulty compared to that. Um, $1,000. Yeah, a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Thanks, Dad. You're awesome. Love you. All right. And here we go. Mute City 3. Mute City is the only one that uh, Hey, this has course looks familiar. Yeah. I can't quite put my finger on it. I don't know. <laughs> if you think back to, you know, Mute City 2 had this really cool change with the, with the traffic circle and the roundabout and the different jump plates. So let's see what Mute City 3 does different than Mute City 1. Well, it looks the same so far. Yeah, it looks the same. Oh. Uh, oh, the, the street is narrower. And there we go. And mines. Mines. Yippee! Um, it, for speedrun purposes, it's basically identical. It's the basically the exact same. If you actually look at the task times, I believe that Mute City 3 is only three hundredths of a second shorter than Mute City 1. So yep. it's basically the exact same, but taking place at night. So this is the only break I get in King League. Oh, crap. Ooh. Okay, I don't even get a break there. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, you have the S-Jet, though. Yeah. After this course, like, the next, uh, I'd say three out of the next four tracks are just awful. Like, I wouldn't say awful. It's just the way the AI is and where vehicles can show up. It's strictly me fighting to get through them and just, you know, like a war zone, basically. So, and the strat for this is basically the same as Mute City 1. You yep, just, you want to boost here through the dirt. Um, you basically, you want to use your S-Jet on what would be the slowest part of the track, so anything like dirt or, you know, a straightway, anything you could realistically cut through. It's interesting because normally if you're doing a five lap or a fast lap, if you mess up, you would just reset, but because you can't do that in a full course run, you kind of just have to roll with whatever happens. So if Z-Wing uses his S-Jet and then gets bumped and he can't bring his speed back up, he just, he has to live with it. 
Yeah, that's and that's not really good because on this track, like it takes a very long time to catch up. Yep. And if you if you get hit before the boost point on some courses, it's fine. You could use your S jet there, and it won't be too much of a time loss. But there are some courses that you just have to hold on to your S jet and hope you can get there in time. Yeah, you can kind of divide every course up into like three zones. You know, the the prior you know prior to the boost point. Oh, Oh, that's Ooh, fine. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, prior to the boost point, it's like a safe zone. You can always recover. After the boost point, though, you're on your own. Like, you have to deal with the fact that you have no boost. Oh, Wild Goose and, and Wild Goose, yeah. Yeah, that's unusual. Wow. You usually see Golden Fox yeah. or Blue Falcon. We got some we got some Goose. And oh. here is the... Yeah, I'm dreading this one. ...most notorious track in this game, probably. <laughs> yeah. If you remember the win mechanic from Deathwind 1, where you get blown about... Uh, as you just passively drive, it's going to be very difficult to deal with here. Yeah. I'm just going to let the course speak for itself. Yeah, this is uh, a million times worse than any other course. But I'm also going... Oh, that oh. So, yeah. There we go. You go really fast, but you have no, like... You basically, just like in Silence, where it's really hard to do the optimal rail cut, so you just bump into the wall, in this course, you just slam into the wall and hope for the best. Yeah. Uh, because the churning with the Fire Stingray when it's at 999 or above is so hard that you just you got to bump, and thankfully you get enough distance from slamming your, your head against the wall that it'll take you to the next dash plate and then, you know, further on on the course. Yeah, those angles are very precise. Like, I can spin out any time when I do those if I'm not, like, cornering just enough. So I actually changed my boost strategy on here to account for that because it's very likely to happen. There's also a chance that like a vehicle will show up. So, and also I didn't want to break, you know, because you can get like a, a, you know, a decent time on here by breaking. But you know, we're trying to show you what makes this vehicle completely busted. Sweet. And yeah, in this course in particular, it, it turns a, we'll say a hampering mechanic of just. Like, you can't take this go good, fast. That was a good dodge. Yeah, that was crazy. It's really hard to dodge that. Yeah, and right uh, now I'm doing... Unless you're Z-Wing. Yeah, and so far I'm getting decent patterns. Like, not that Ooh. bad one. But, uh... He cut into the rail a tiny bit, which, because it's not an S-Jet, the speed doesn't go back up, but he's recovered in time to still maintain quite a lot. I think it was, like, <laughs> 700. Awesome, so y'all can't see me, but I'm just going to talk to you guys. Ooh, okay. Ooh, oh, oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's okay. He did mostly good. Yeah, I'm, I'm and, and then he bumped into you from the back, so you prevented getting past. Yeah. That was a really good death win too, all things considered. Uh, okay. Yeah, actually, that's very good. Yeah. 157. Just finishing it was my goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, de death win two legitimately can be a run killer. Yep. And then we have Port Town. We basically have arguably the hardest course into the other arguable harder course, and then a breather. So Port Town two. It's similar to Port Town 1, but it's a lot, because it's a lot longer, it's a lot more claustrophobic. So, and especially because the, the AI gets a lot more vicious, it can be very hard to deal with, especially because for the back half of the course, you're not going to have your S-Jet. Because, since it's similar to Port Town 1, the jump skip is still there. Yep, it's basically the same as Port Town 1, it's just lots of weaving at the end. So speed man like like maintaining high speed is even more important, and also it because of the uh, the way the uh, tracks like narrowed out back air when vehicle. Good. Oh, a little bit of pinball. Yeah, a little bit of pinball. That's the thing about the Stingray with its high speed is that if you get hit the wrong way, instead of just you know slow going down to a to a slow down, it just bounce all around. And then uh, right here, since I'm, my speed's really low, so yeah. I'm going to have to use an adjusted strat, which right now it should be just enough. Yep, you basically, you use the S-Jet just enough to get you past, mm. and then when you get grabbed by the machine, it'll pause the S-Jet, so you'll have a little sliver of the, of the cycle, of the oscillation to get back to top speed, but fortunately he did crash yeah. into the rail. Yeah, I'll have to do it again. Uh, like right here is a very... Very bad point for me to get hit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like right here, I I should be fine now. I'll get back up to full speed, and then we'll try one more time. Uh, when I landed over there, I didn't like hop 
Um, I'm also like aiming a little too more to the right because uh, when uh, like the angle isn't tight because I'm in I'm under boost. Wait, how am I second place? <laughs> Did he I didn't even notice? Was was he always ahead of me? I guess. Wow, I didn't even notice. Well, maybe he's not a poser. Huh? That's Blue Falcon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, we will take his bounty. Yeah. Or not. I mean, there's still one more lap to go. Hey, thank you, Fox. Okay. That was unusual. I'm, I mean, that can happen on this track. Like, right there, my rank flipped. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because essentially, when you land on the other side while you're grabbed by the UFO, it still counts you from your original position on the jump plate. So, mm -hmm. you saw he was ranked second still, but was way ahead of... He was way ahead of second place for a little bit until the rubber band right behind you again. Okay, crazy. That's well, actually, that's actually Should fine. Be fine. Yeah, second. Oh, not third. Third. It's okay. <laughs> You'll get it. The first third of the run. <laughs> Thankfully, Goose was a little too slow on the draw. So Red Canyon Two is a nice break from that. Yeah. So we went from one of the hardest courses in the game to one of the other hardest courses in the game to. Honestly, one of the easiest courses in the game. It's a really nice breather, especially for what lies ahead on the final track. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're not going to get the bump. So. Yeah, this, this course, despite it being in King League, is like actually pretty easy. Um, the you got the jumps again, but you're not going to go to the right. That's closed off. Instead, nah. you're going to continue on down, and there's going to be this giant arrow. Yeah, I'm going to needlessly jump on the right side of that arrow. Well, it's not really needless. It's actually more optimal. Um, but you can see that you don't have as much uh, real estate to land on on the right side. Effectively, what I'm doing is when I'm done with these jump plates up here, I'm lining up for that, that corner right before the end. So it's like one of the longest stretches in the game where you just line up. You know, it's just a, a small racing line. Like right there, it's just one single turn to the right. And, and hit it? Yep. yep. I mean, it's very I've, tight, as you can see. I mean, if he lands like two pixels in front of where he landed, there's a chance that he just explodes. Yeah, and the boost point on there, once again, I adjust a little bit based on uh, my experience with speedrunning this game. Going optimal, you know, is it is faster, but the danger of doing it on this course is that you're effectively boosting into a place where you have no information on how the AI is going to be positioned. So once you boot, like right here, if I would have boosted at the actual ideal point, I, there was always a chance I could have slammed into that vehicle. So by delaying until I like see what's in front of me, you know, I can make a more well-informed decision. And, and it's not even that much like more often. We're talking like frames, like, you know, less than a tenth of a second per lap, which, you know, obviously over the course of five laps, four laps, that does add up. But for a full game speed run, you know, it's negligible. Oh, this is going to be close. Okay, You'll get it. And right here, no, I want to, no. That's good. Uh, you got a very forgiving bump there. Very forgiving. Yep, and this would be the last course that I finished second place in, uh, because the next is the finale, which is uh, Firefield, and I'm sure everybody knows how bad fire, Firefield is oh, from their yeah. experience. It's very tough. So we go from one of the easier courses to definitely one of the most brutal. If you were a kid playing this game, especially not using the Fire Stingray, and if you didn't get stuck on Deathwind 2, you definitely got stuck on Firefield. Yeah. It's just a brutal course. There yeah. we go. That's the last second we're place. Trying to, we're trying to give them the victory, and they didn't want it. Yeah. So this is also the longest course in the game. Yep. And it's got the more complex, most complex strategies. It's also like the Rainbow Road of F-Zero. I believe it's the only uh, course slash venue that's appeared in every F-Zero game. Oh, that's bad. Oh. Yep, so immediately at the beginning, there's going to be mines. There's going to be a tight hairpin into another tight one. There's going to be some dirt patches. There's going to be magnets. Yep. It's very brutal. And unlike the other courses in the game where the recharge zone, right, the, the energy refill zone is at the beginning of the track, in Firefield, it's at the end. Yep. So it's a whole gauntlet to get through. And then it's, it also gives you just a very minuscule amount compared to the rest. Yeah, the wall bangs are intentional. Uh, this course is too... It, it's too hard to corner with Stingray. It's actually impossible to take these corners without losing speed. So the best strategy is just to slam into the wall and preserve some speed. And one of those walls we actually will boost out of. And then also the... There's this uh, second lane that shows you a... Uh, like a, a really good boost. You take that, 
Oh, that's going to hit. Uh, no, uh, no. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, that was very, that was very unfair. Yeah, it's a 50-50 when you see uh, an AI bumper car on that line. It's a 50-50 if they're just going to bounce against the wall and collide into the mine or not. Okay. That's Thankfully, it didn't there. So from here, I'm going to set up for the uh, S-boost point, which is just slamming the wall like that. Yep. And as long as I don't hit that vehicle. And then Ooh, somehow weave in between slick. those. And now I'm back up to a safe position. You know, top three is safe because yep. you have to finish third for it to count as a victory. Third or better. Yeah, third or better. And usually it's going Fox in first. I mean, yep. most here we go. Of the back in the front. No bumper in the, by the mine this time, which is really good. Okay, that's good. And hopefully I can take wall this bang here. Yep. yep, that's an actual successful wall bang. That was a very good one. Yep. And then from here, it's just reaction. Like here, I'm trying. <sighs> that's not a lot of space to clear. Yeah, that was very, but once very I'm, dangerous. Yeah, but once I'm in first place, like, there is a lot more consistency, a lot more control. You control your own destiny when you're in first, basically. Yep. Because the only thing that's going to be in front of you is whatever the game spawns. It's not going to be the other uh, playable machines or whatever. Yep. Good, little good dodge there. Yep, so I'll do that outside track one more time. Oh, no, he shouldn't do it. Oh, I got to take the... Oh. Okay, that's... Nice. I don't see that that often, actually. Yeah, that was uh, that's a rare one. Yeah. Okay, and then once I do this lap, the final lap, I'll actually take the inside line and... Yeah, there's not, yeah. There's not really many crazy, you know, it's not like White Land 2 or Silence with the, with the chicane churn. Firefield is just good skill. Yeah, it's it's crazy, crazy hard. Um, it's it's a struggle to get through. Like no matter who you are, this is going to be your uh, your hardest. Uh, this, this will be your hardest course. Okay, and here's the Here final lap. Final lap. So I'll do a small countdown when I'm about at about, the uh, finish line. About 35 seconds remain. Yep. And I'm going to take the inner point this time, and hopefully I can do it right. There we wow. go. Yeah, I'd say this is probably like a 322 maybe or something. Which is still better than my best time. Well, I think I hit that vehicle. Uh, oh, crap. You're low on... Yeah, uh -oh. I am. That's what I feared. When you power down, um, you actually lose p top speed uh, when you're flashing like that, which yeah. I didn't think I'd ever have to explain, but yeah. it's a place for everything. So, three, two, one, time. We still got first. So, if I had to guess what my time is, 41.42. Your time was 41.31. Wow. Wow, that's better than I thought. That's amazing. Not bad. That is amazing. Oh, man. That was good. Good job, by the way. Good job, man. Hey, yep. you get all the props. You're the one actually playing. <laughs> God knows I would not be able to do this. Oh, it's tough. It's very difficult. Now, it, it, he made it seem easy. He is the third best player. Uh, on this game's leaderboard, not only in speedrun.com, but for F Zero Central, where we keep track of all the time attacks. I think I'm fifth on the board, or fourth maybe. You're third, you're three to five on, yeah. on F Zero Central on the time attack ladder. He's third. In contrast, I'm 27th, and or tied for 27th, and he did a lot of stuff that I would not be able to do, especially in a full game run. So, <laughs> I'm gonna give some claps for Z Wing again. Thank you. Yes. We're just going to let this play out. Yeah. The race is over. Yeah, this is your reward for playing the game on the hardest difficulty. You are the master of F-Zero. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're one of them. And next... Uh -oh. oh, man. We got left on a cliffhanger. Yeah, we did. All right, well, thanks, everybody, for allowing me to do this at GDQ. Um, it's been, like, I believe 10 years since I last did a run, so I'm very uh, appreciative of being allowed, you know, being back to do this. This is a great motivator for me in speedrunning. Uh, thanks to F-Zero Central, you know, for being some great runners. I think I got a few on the couch right now. Yeah. I, I definitely got a few over there. So thanks for showing up for the run and supporting me, and thanks for the marathon and what you're raising. GDQ 2024, it's Keys Run here, and I'm joined by 
Quite possibly one of my favorite duos in a very long time. We have JSR and Peanut Butter. JSR, how you doing, my friend? I'm just really, I'm really happy to be here. I'm excited for AGDQ. It's my first run at a mainline event in uh, six years. So a uh, lot's changed since the last time I was on the big stage. I'm really excited to be here. And uh, speaking of duos, my buddy here is making his AGDQ debut. And although he's tired at the moment, He's very excited as well. We've been practicing very hard, so we're really just stoked. We can't wait. Now, I, I never get to ask an origin story for an animal before. Usually when I interview people, it's like, what got you into speed running? And, you know, I'm sure everyone at home would love to know what got you into speed running. But also, we got, we got to know about peanut butter. Like, what, what started all of this? So I got PB during the pandemic. It's a long story, but um, he was just smart at everything. He's just good at everything. And... I had a long term.